In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to do a parasitic draw test on your vehicle. This test should be done whenever the battery is replaced or you're having battery issues, especially if it's after the car sits overnight. A parasitic draw is an excessive electrical drain on the battery. This is usually noticed after the vehicle has been sitting for a few days. I've already checked my battery and determined it's good. If you need to test your charging system or battery, watch my video right here. To perform this test, your meter needs to read current. Most meters do. I'll perform this test with an inexpensive meter and an expensive meter. Then I'll compare the readings to show you the difference. Let's get started. Make sure no accessories are plugged in. Everything is turned off. The key is out of the ignition, the windows are down, and the doors are closed. Remove the negative cable. If you have an anti-theft radio, you want to make sure you have that code before removing the cable. This is how I do it. This will keep your radio from locking out and keep your modules memory. Once the cable's loose, lift it up enough to get a paper clip or a piece of wire underneath. Now retighten this. We never lost connection, so all your presets should be intact. Also, if your draw is intermittent, you won't interrupt anything by disconnecting the power. You can also buy a battery saver. This will do the same thing. Now get a paper clip, straighten it out, and then bend it 180 degrees. And then slip it under the battery terminal on the battery post. Now we're gonna twist it because we're gonna tighten this on the battery post. Then get a pair of pliers and just twist it until it's tight. And right there, it looks tight. Now take a jumper wire and connect one end to the terminal and the other end to the paper clip. And then remove the terminal. Okay. So the reason I put this jumper wire in, number one, is it keeps your radio alive. And if you had a intermittent draw and disconnecting the battery and connecting it, got rid of that draw, then you wouldn't be able to find it. So this keeps that good. The next one is when you hook up your meter for the current to go through it, Without a jumper wire, watch the arc. This will blow your meter fuse. Did you see that? Let me do that again. So if you're hooking up your meter leads and you see that spark, you just blew your fuse. Now let's test our current draw. So take your meter leads and put the red lead on the negative terminal and the black lead on your paper clip that's hooked to the post. Now let's turn on our meter. We'll turn on the fluke first. We'll take our meter leads. We want to go into that 10 amp fused. I've already moved it on the milliamp scale. And then we're gonna put this in the common. There's our reading, but that's not our actual reading. We still need to disconnect our jumper wire. Once I disconnect this, all the current, instead of flowing through our jumper wire, is gonna flow through our meter and read the parasitic draw. There we go. We have 935 milliamps, which is almost one amp of current draw. That's way too much. 
Let me go ahead and put the jumper wire back on. Let me disconnect that meter lead and let's go to the other meter. Let's do the same thing. Let me connect the meter lead back to the negative post. This will go in the calm. We're on the 10 amp scale and we're going into the 10 amp port. I see, looks like 310, but all the current isn't going through it right now. Let me disconnect the jumper lead. And there we go, we have 870 milliamps, which is almost an amp. Now, if I put this on the 200 milliamp scale, I'll be blowing the fuse in the meter. So if you find when performing this test, you're not getting a current reading, it could be because of blown fuses in your meter. You'll have to remove the screws in the back and inside the meter, there's a couple of fuses. Use a separate meter and put it on the ohm scale. And we'll have to do a continuity test on the fuses. So this is the lower amp scale, 400. And it is good. It does have continuity. And this is the 10 amp fuse. And that says OL. So I'm going to replace this fuse with a good one. And then we'll recheck it. And now we have continuity. So just make sure you replace your fuse if it's blown. So now the specification on this is under 50 milliamps. We're at 870. This would be considered a major draw on your vehicle. Now I purposely left the light on in the vehicle to show you what a parasitic draw would look like if the light was left on. Let me go ahead and shut that off. Shut the door and let's see what the meter does now. So I'm looking at 179 milliamps of a draw. This is because the body control modules are still awake. It could take 30 seconds and all the way up to 30 minutes for them body modules to fall asleep. So don't condemn the parasitic draw until you allow enough time. There it goes. Now we're at eight milliamps. This is more what you'd like to see. So 50 milliamps is the maximum allowed. Under 25 is a lot better. Typically, I see 10 to 15 milliamps when I perform this test. One more thing before I go, these are amp clamps. These hook over the wires and they give you a reading. Right now it's saying 30 milliamp draw. These are good for larger amp draws, but they're not very accurate when you get down to the smaller milliamps. And the ones that are, are very expensive. Do it the way I showed you. This way is gonna give you false readings. I made this video, how to test for a parasitic draw, to help you eliminate parasitic draw as being the cause of your problem. If you found you do have a parasitic draw, well, that's a whole new ball game and a whole new video which is coming up. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and thanks for watching.